It may look like a harmless bagel toaster, but inside is a deadly donut. How do you know PlayStation is not a normal game system? Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So Tarek and I are continuing the series, The PlayStation 1 in Paradise, where I take a look at some of my favorite PlayStation 1 games of all time, both in 3D and in 2D. And if you can't tell already, we're playing the original Ape Escape, which was one of my favorite 3D games on the PlayStation 1, and basically introduced a whole generation to the concept of analog controls. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell, it definitely helps us out. And if you feel something kind of want to support that channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But Ape Escape is just an absolutely hilarious game that uses the analog controls on the PlayStation 1 in ways that we had never seen before. This game basically feels like it was developed around the controller, and the entire gameplay hook itself is basically just meant to use the analog in new and exciting ways. Some that work incredibly well, and others that don't work whatsoever, but I'll get into that in just a moment. But right off the top, Ape Escape is unlike pretty much every other 3D platformer on the original PlayStation, even though it looks like it should be exactly what you would expect, and that is down to the analog controls and what you're actually doing in the game. There is not really a ton of 3D platforming to do, even though it takes place in a 3D space. What it is, is an interactive puzzle game where you need to catch these apes, although I swear they still look like monkeys, leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think they are, and continue on along the level. You do some jumping, you do some navigating, but a lot of it is just more environmental puzzle solving, but I absolutely love it. When I first played this game, what really hooked me in was a sense of whimsy and charm. The graphics for the era were great, this was a late release for PlayStation in 1999, and even here on Duck Station, it still looks absolutely incredible. And as we move into the first level of the game, trying to figure out how to actually capture the apes is one of the most difficult things in the game. They are fast, they read your movements, they have their own attacks, they throw banana peels down onto the ground to try to trip you up. It's basically like a game of Mario Kart 64, except it's a 3D platformer involving Sony and monkeys that run around. The main hook of the game is you need to catch a certain amount of apes in a level. Once you do that, you can move on to the next level and traverse through the game. But it's such a fun experience even though it is so simple. You have a few gadgets, a way to attack, a net to catch monkeys, and that is all the game really asks of you. But it's the environments, the charm, all of the different things you learn along the way, and just the fun aspect of analog controls in a way we've never seen before that really sells the entire Ape Escape concept. This series hasn't been doing much lately, but I do hope at some point in time maybe PlayStation brings this back as a PSVR 2 series. I'd love to play Ape Escape in virtual reality. But there's so many different ways to navigate and play this game. There are monkeys underwater and we need to use this device to shoot out nets to capture them. Every single monkey has his own unique personality as far as his movement, where he is, and what you need to do to capture him. And there's so many different things hidden in the world as well. Just kind of researching what's around you, seeing the world, looking at the graphics, and then trying to catch the apes is so much fun. And because there is no timer at any particular level, you can take your time and just explore, experiment, and see what the world has to offer you. But now that I finally did catch that ape in that shootable net, we can move further into the level and see what's going on. And what I really love about Ape Escape is it's constantly showing you something new and different. Even though we're in the same level, we've gone into a different area, and it does have a different vibe to it and just a little bit more platforming going on. But honestly, it's the analog controls that really make this game so unique. Using the right analog stick to throw your net or attack your enemies was something that really had never been done before, at least on PlayStation 1. And it 100% works here until we get to later in the game. But I just love this entire game's charm. The results screen, the warning screen of how many monkeys you have to capture along with the wireframe, all of these level intros, it just has such a look and feel with these bright vibrant colors. I think this game has aged really well. And I know it's called Ape Escape, but I'm going to keep calling them monkeys, there's nothing you can do about that. But as we get further into the game, I will say that this game isn't quote unquote difficult. But it does take a lot of precision platforming and a lot of puzzle solving to get further into the levels. Because sometimes the game's going to show you an area that you can't quite access, but it's going to tell you what you need to do, just not how to do it. And I do love these environmental puzzles where the game's kind of coaxing you into what you should do next, but not giving you the answer. But I will say one of my favorite aspects of Ape Escape is the soundtrack. It is from start to finish one of the best soundtracks on the PlayStation 1. Listen and I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, I've never chased an ape in real life, nor do I ever hope to, but if I did, I would assume some bright musical music would be playing while he ran after the ape until the ape turned around, mauled me, and ripped my fingers off. Apparently, that is what they do, folks. But as we move further into Ape Escape here, the soundtrack really just drives forward how weird and charming this game really is. And within levels, we have so much to see. And this is what I mean when I get to the environmental puzzle solving aspect of this game. We see one of the monkeys riding around on a T Rex on his tail, and we realize that at least at at the beginning of this, we don't exactly know how we should approach it. If you run up to the T-Rex, it's going to lunge forward and you can realize that it's not going to hurt you unless you take a direct head-on hit. So now we need to figure out within the environment what we can do and how we can make this dinosaur move around so that we have space to the side to be able to actually take a swipe at the monkey. If we move him over to this more open area here and take the net out, if our timing is just right, we can net that ape and get out of the level. But that's what I really enjoy about this game. Every single monkey is simple to understand. You see a monkey, you need to capture it. But when you actually have to do it, it gets quite difficult. And the game also has such a great progression system. As you get further in, the doctor here is going to be giving you different gadgets, all of which are going to go towards helping you figure out where the apes are or how to catch them. Because in later levels, even finding the apes in the first First place can be quite difficult but the game does such a good job of basically keystoning you how to do it you get this ape detector here and you get a little tutorial level showing you how you have to use it to be able to locate apes the game always tells you what it expects you to do and then it lets you loose in a level where the apes are going to be hiding or whatever power up you get is going to be utilized so you know what you should be doing just not where or how you have to do it but as we move into this level, this is when the game actually starts getting relatively challenging because we're going to find all of these different picture plants here and there's going to be an ape in one of them. If you hit it with your baton, it's going to open up and honestly, don't run into the Venus flytrap. It's not going to be good for your health in the game. I also love that the health is demarcated as cookies or crackers and you need to get more cookies to restore your health. But you can see here we have located the ape and we need to go ahead and hit this pitcher plant so the ape comes out. But now we're running around in an environment with all these deadly plants. He's throwing banana peels behind him. It becomes an exercise and just straight up platforming to be able to get close enough to catch that ape without actually getting hit by anything. Do it right, you get a new ape. Do it wrong, you're just going to take a death and have to restart the level. But sometimes when you restart a level, you have to hear the voice acting over again, which is classic PlayStation 1 era, decent but not great, but fun to hear. Go ahead and listen and I'll be right back. Hello, Professor. Remember me? It's me, Spectre, the future leader of the New Age. That's right. Apes will soon rule the world, just as it should have been from the beginning. Spectre, what ha who, what's going on here? What are you planning to do? Spectre, oh yes. You're the monkey that performs at the amusement park. What? He's that cute little monkey that everyone loves to come and see? But how? Yes, that's right. I stumbled onto this incredible invention of yours. It's not great voice acting, but it is charming voice acting, and it's what you would expect out of the PlayStation 1 era. But the weirdest thing about this game is a hyper-intelligent ape only became that way because he put a hat on that a professor made. In this game, it's Spectre, and if we move over to Futurama, the professor actually made a hat for Gunter to wear that did the exact same thing. Weirdest thing is, that episode and this game came out within a month of each other. I don't know if a hyper-intelligent ape is a really big storyline, but somehow two people did the exact same thing in game and animation form at the same time, and that'll always surprise me. But as we get further into Ape Escape, I know I told you earlier that sometimes the analog controls are amazing and innovative, and other times they're absolutely mind-bendingly difficult. You're going to see we get a little tutorial here on how to move the analog sticks to row this boat, and you have to basically rotate them in different directions to be able to either go straight, turn, forwards, or backwards. In theory, this makes perfect sense. In execution, for some reason, it does not matter how I've ever moved the analog sticks, whether on real hardware on Duck Station here, this boat is one of the most difficult things to control in any video game of this generation ever made. But it is fun to try. This was still the early advent of analog controls. PlayStation 1 didn't launch with them. The Sega Saturn had an analog stick, but it was only for certain games. It was only the Nintendo 64 that 100% dedicated itself to analog control first. But Sony and Japan studio went there with Ape Escape and this franchise is still one of my favorite franchises of all time. I just wish Sony would bring it back and do a little bit more with it. But if you've never played any Ape Escape game you can 100% start here but if you don't love PlayStation 1 era stuff maybe you should start with the PlayStation 2 game. 
I think Ape Escape 3 is the best game in the franchise, but tell me down below if you've ever played an Ape Escape game and which one is your favorite, because for my money, like I said, Ape Escape 3 is the height of the franchise, but when this came out for PlayStation 1, I'd never seen anything like it before, and I absolutely fell in love. Short of that, I'll be back with more PlayStation next week, and I'll have videos with the week, but it's time to go catch more apes. Bye-bye.